Hello everyone, DM Gashbad here, and we are back with another 6th edition Warhammer Fantasy Skirmish scenario. Today's scenario is Twilight of the Dead. A group of my Empire soldiers has been surrounded by zombies, and we have to survive the night inside an old burned-down farmhouse. I have been looking forward to this one. I played this scenario back in 2004. The exception was, was that I didn't have my Empire army at the time, so I actually replaced the Empire soldiers with my orcs and goblins. It was one of the best Warhammer Fantasy games I had ever played. I still have the notes from that thing. It took place during the old Storm of Chaos global campaign. My orcs were split up, surrounded, fighting to the very end. It came down to the very last die roll on the very last turn. Anyway, it was just a fantastic game, so I was absolutely eager to do this thing again. It's supposed to be a two-player game, but I think it can easily be adapted to one player. As far as the rules go, there's really not a whole lot to it. It's a two foot by two foot board. There's going to be a farmhouse in the center. There's going to be a well nearby. Two of my empire troops can start within the house. The rest have to start outside of four inches of it. And then a bunch of zombies start showing up. I have to survive 10 rounds until daybreak. And then all the zombies have to shuffle off and si find somewhere else to hide. And so let's get to it. Here are the empire forces I'll be using. This is prescribed by the scenario itself. I don't have a choice in this. I get a Count's Champion, that is the champion of the Greatsword unit. I get a Handgunner Marksman, who's been upgraded with a Repeater Handgun. I get three Handgunners and three Swordsmen, and that's it. Facing off against them is the forces of the Living Dead. Those are 24 zombies. Now when the scenario starts, four groups of four will be deployed randomly on the board, either on a table edge, by the cellar door and the first floor of the farmhouse, or by the well. Starting on turn five, four more will arrive, each of them deployed randomly, individually, as with the others. But there will never be more than 24 on the board at any given time. And here's the table we'll be playing on. Those of you who have been following my channel may have noticed it's been a while since my last battle report. And the reason for it is this. I went and made this farmhouse specifically for this scenario. I do have some other buildings in my collection that I could have used, but for whatever reason I didn't really want to use those. Mostly it was because they didn't have a cellar door on the first floor. I could have easily used a marker, I have D&D counters that look exactly like a trap door. I could have used one of those, but I thought... I wanted to make a house specifically for this scenario. I was so excited about it, I wanted to do this. And I figured since I'm building a house specifically for this scenario, I might as well make it exactly as described in the map on this scenario sheet. So I went, I imported the image of the map into Illustrator, and I found out exactly how big the house was that they used, and I replicated that. And it took me forever. If anyone else is thinking about doing something like this, I want to recommend you not. First of all, using their dimensions, the house is huge. It's an L-shaped house. One side is 8 inches long, one side is 9 inches long, and the front faces are 5 inches long. That's actually really big. It's more like an inn or a manor home than a farmhouse. And partially because it is so large, it just took me a really long time to construct and paint. That said, I'm absolutely thrilled with how it came out. It's going to look great on a Mordheim table or something like that, and I do plan on making some other smaller houses like that, so maybe I'll make a video about what I did to construct this thing later on. In the meantime, there's a million videos on how to make Warhammer, Wargaming, or Mordheim houses out there. And really, part of the reason it took me so long is because I hadn't done anything like this in a while, and I was learning as I went, so what I did was I just watched those videos and, and adapted those methods onto this. Much faster was the well. I'm actually really happy about this. I think I made this little piece of terrain way back when we were playing Mordheim. It's probably 20 years old. I made it out of just little bits of leftover wood and cardboard. I just pulled it out of storage, put a coat of spackle on it to hide the corrugated edges of the cardboard, painted it up, and I'm really happy with it. Mostly because it's something that's been sitting around forever unpainted and it finally got done. But anyway, here's the terrain all set out, map accurate, and with my Empire soldiers deployed in it. There is a ruined second floor, and there are two halves to it. At the last minute, I decided to add a ladder to the other side. So there's a stairwell on one side and a ladder on the other. I was a little torn about this because I wasn't sure if I was giving myself an advantage or not. On the one hand, it gave me more room to sequester myself on that upper floor and restrict the amount of zombies that can come after me. On the other hand, if I put half my forces on one side and half my forces on another, now that's two access points that the zombies can use to get to me instead of just one, so maybe it's not in my best interest. 
But then I thought, if I don't have a stairway leading to that other side of the floor, then theoretically my Empire soldiers can either climb up to that one portion or jump across the gap from one side of the ruined second floor to the other, and there'd be no way for the zombies to get at me. The zombies have an initiative zero, and as far as I can tell, will automatically fail any test to climb or jump. So I put the ladder there. On the left hand side, there's a handgunner and a swordsman guarding that area. They're going to try and dart into the building and climb up the ladder. Around back in the upper left, I have another handgunner who's also going to try and get to that point. And over on the far side by the big collapsed wall, I have my Count's Champion and two swordsmen. Their job is going to be covering the retreat of my missile troops and killing off any zombies in the way. And speaking of zombies, here they are. Now because I'm playing this scenario as a one player game, the zombies just have a very simple AI that they're going to follow. They're going to move towards the closest Empire soldier as fast as they can, and when they are deployed, they are spread evenly along the edge that has been determined. So you can see one group of four went on the left hand side, one group of four went on the right hand side, and two groups of four went on the south side, on the lower edge of the board. Since the zombies are slow, my Empire troops get the first turn, and we have a special rule. We can run even if we're within eight inches of an enemy model. What I think I don't want to do is get bogged down into a combat and surrounded by zombies, so all of my guys are going to take the opportunity to run into the house. Because I can move 8 and the zombies only charge 8, I know I'm going to get there, I know no one's going to charge me in the next turn, and so I'm just going to try and tick down the clock until daybreak. In the shooting phase, the marksman fires with his repeating handgun. So because this is Warhammer Skirmish and I'm always shooting at a single man-sized target, all my shots are going to have a minus 1 to hit. The Marksman has a ballistic skill of 4, but he's also going to be minus 1 because he's firing multiple shots. He's got 3 of them with this repeater handgun. Unlike the other handguns, the repeater handgun can move and fire, so I was tempted to put him on the ground floor and have him take shots as he moved and use the guys who have the mover fire weapons in stationary positions on the second floor, but then I decided I really wanted those 3 shots firing with as few modifiers as possible for as long as possible, so I ended up putting him inside the house to start with. Anyway, he still needs 5s or 6s to hit, but with 3 shots he does manage to hit one of the zombies on the lower edge. He manages to wound as well, and the zombies have a special injury chart. 1 through 3 they're knocked down, 4 through 6 they're out. I only get a 1, 2, or 3, and so the zombie is just knocked down. It's going to slow him down, but not by much. The other handgunner manages to hit with his shot, but unfortunately fails to wound. So it's the zombie turn, and that's going to be real straightforward. They're all just going to surge towards the house their mighty 4 inches. So it's round two and the Empire moved to the second floor of the house. On that one side, we are going to have the marksmen, the two handgunners, and two swordsmen are going to guard that ladder. On the other side, we have the Count's Champion, another handgunner, and one more swordsman. We are pretty much in position and no zombies are going to charge me in this next round because I'm too far away. In the shooting phase, the marksman fires with his repeater handgun and he knocks down another zombie. And again, the other handgunner that can fire hits a zombie but fails to wound it. Tough zombies on that side of the house. And in the zombie turn, the shambling undead close in. In round three, we finish up our preparations before the undead get to us. The Count's Champion and the Swordsman take positions at the top of the stairs. In the shooting phase, all the handgunners get to fire, but they all miss. Fortunately, the Marksman belts out another barrage of lead and manages to finally kill a zombie. Only 15 left. In the zombie turn, one zombie manages to charge up the ladder and into one of the Swordsmen. On the other side, none of the zombies can see either the Count's Champion or the Swordsman in order to charge them, but they have a special rule that they can roll a d6, and on a 4+, plus they'll be able to charge them anyway if they're within 4 inches. Well, one of the zombies does make that 4+, plus, and so he thunders up the stairs and into combat with my leader. And the remaining zombies just surge forward in a big pile of rotting flesh. In the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase, my swordsman manages to pass his fear test, the Count's Champion giving everyone around there his leadership of 8. Unfortunately, the swordsman doesn't go and wound the zombie attacking him, but the zombie also misses the swordsman. On the other side, my champion passes his fear test with double 1s, and then goes and with his 2 attacks, hits with 2 6s. Following up this success with yet more, he rolls a 5 and a 6 to wound, which means one of those wounds is a critical, so he rolls 3 times on the chart and manages to make himself a dead zombie. So the Count's Champion did great. Great job, guy. But after doing that, I had a couple of concerns. 
Number one, the account champion is the only guy with leadership eight, and I am still liable to route test. So if I lose 25% of my force, so if I lose two guys, I have to make a route test at the beginning of every round, or I run away and lose the scenario. So I decided it's probably better for me not to risk the Count Champion. Even though he's great at killing zombies, I really don't want to risk losing him to a lucky hit and then being forced to make route tests on Leadership 7. The other thing I was worried about was with the stairs and that little side edge, I was wondering if a zombie couldn't charge someone up the stairs and then another zombie behind him hopping over that distance between the stairs and the upper level over to the right and attacking my handgunner. If it's an elevation change of less than an inch, then a Warhammer skirmish model can clear it with no movement penalty. So in order to prevent that from happening, I decided that I'm going to send my one swordsman down the stairs a bit and just try and stop her that whole area up. On the other side, I arranged my swordsman so that only one zombie can get into that space to attack one of them, but in the remaining turns, I can use my other swordsman to charge in and help him out. So two swordsmen against one zombie. Unfortunately, the other swordsman is too cowardly, and he failed his fear test and refused to help out his buddy. We didn't get a whole lot more success in the shooting phase, all the shots either missing or failing to wound. And then we went on to the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase, and yet more incompetence, the swordsman failed to wound and the zombie missed. So it's now zombie turn four, and the zombie charges up the stairs into that swordsman, and the rest mass into the lower floor of the farmhouse. In the combat phase, on the latter fight, both the zombie and the swordsman miss their targets. However, the swordsman on the stairs passes his fear test with a double one. He hits the zombie, wounds him, and sends him knocked down onto the stairs. It is round five, and so the zombie reinforcements are starting to show up. You can see a couple wandering in from the top three table edges. The other swordsman by the ladder manages to get his wits together and charges the zombie to help out his friend. One handgunner manages to kill a zombie swarming around on the lower floor. The other two handgunners miss, as does the marksman. Speaking of missing, both of the swordsmen on the ladder manage to miss the zombie and the zombie misses them in return. The swordsman on the stairs automatically hits the zombie who was knocked down in front of him, so all he needs to do is wound him and he'll be taken out of action. Unfortunately, he fails that roll. In the zombie turn, the zombie on the stairs manages to stand up and the rest of the guys just lurch towards the action. On the stairs, the swordsman misses, the zombie goes and hits but doesn't wound. Over by the ladder, the cowardly swordsman still can't get his act together and he misses the zombie, but the first swordsman hits and then wounds with a crit, so he gets two rolls on the injury chart and manages to kill that zombie. It is now round six and more zombie reinforcements shuffle forward from either side. None of the Empire troops move, so we go on to the shooting phase. All handgunners miss, the marksman manages to knock down one zombie. At this point, it's pretty obvious that's not going to make much of an impact. And in the close combat phase, the swordsman on the stairs again puts the boot to the face of the zombie and knocks him down again. But in the zombie turn, that guy stands back up again as well as another zombie charging up the ladder. And of course, the rest just lurch towards the smell of brains. So I decide in the close combat phase that the zombie charging up the stairs is going to charge against the cowardly swordsman who hesitated charging in to help his friend. And wouldn't you know it, that guy goes and fails his fear test again. So in 6th edition, that means that you need 6s to hit in close combat, but he goes and rolls a 6 anyway. Not only that, he wounds and kills the zombie. He just flails around with his sword while screaming in a terrified way, and the zombie just ends up skewering himself on the guy's sword. Great job, hero. On the stairway, the zombie gets up, ready to come at this guy one more time, but by this point, my swordsman has his measure, and he hits, then gets him with a crit and lops the zombie's head off. Good round for the Empire. So it is round seven and more zombies shuffle their way onto the board. I want to point out at this point that I went and painted a well specifically for this scenario as well as a whole house that has a cellar door and not one zombie has appeared from either of those two places. Because my Empire soldiers killed their opponents in the round before, no one's in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I decide not to move anybody anywhere because this has been working out great so far. So we go on to the shooting phase. My marksman hits but doesn't wound. Two handgunners go and miss, but one of my handgunners does go hit a zombie and kill him. Honestly, that's not the amazing thing. Considering the carpet of zombies directly below my handgunners, it's shocking that they're able to miss at all. So it's zombie turn seven. It's getting kind of late. One zombie charges up the stairs and into combat, and the other charges up the ladder. The rest just shuffle forward, mill about on that lower floor, and moan. 
So the braver of the two swordsmen is the one charged this round. Unfortunately, his nerve breaks at this point because the zombie is a little scarier than the last one, and he fails his fear test. And unlike his friend, fear doesn't give strength to his arm, and he misses the assailant. For the zombie's part, the zombie hits but doesn't wound. On the stairs, my courageous swordsman passes his fear test again, but both he and the zombie miss each other. It is now round eight. We get some more zombie reinforcements, but only three of them this round because we are at our maximum of 24 zombies on the board. The second swordsman passes his fear test for a change and runs in to help his pal. And then somehow all the guns go and miss. On the fight at the top of the ladder, both of the swordsmen miss. The zombie hits, wounds, however, in sixth edition, sword and shield give you a plus one armor save. So those swordsmen have a four plus armor. He goes and passes that, and so he's doing just fine. And on the stairs, my head-kicking swordsman manages to knock down another zombie. So it's the zombie's turn, and the zombie on the stairs staggers to his feet as the rest just sort of lurch slowly forward. On the fight of the ladder, both of the swordsmen miss, as does the zombie. And I think my swordsman on the stairs is finally getting tired, as both those guys also miss as well. So it is round 9, and we are still at the maximum number of zombies, and so no new reinforcements will appear this round either. And I've discovered that my Empire guy is in a really good shape. There's really no way that the zombies are going to kill off all my guys, so the only thing that they can do is inflict enough casualties so that I have to make a route test. But since I take route tests at the beginning of my turn, that means there's only one round for them to inflict the two casualties they need for me to have to take a route test at the beginning of my 10th round. So they've only got two close combat phases to make this happen, so let's see if they can. In the shooting phase, all that my handguns can accomplish is that we knock down one of the zombies below us. On the fight to the top of the ladder, one of my swordsmen fails to wound the zombie, but the second one gets him with a crit and kills him. Things just got a lot harder for the zombies. On the stairs, my swordsman fails to wound and the zombie misses. So this is it. This is really the last chance for the zombies. Another zombie charges up the ladder. The swordsman passes his fear check and the zombie misses. So that's it. Even if the zombie on the stairs kills that swordsman, what are chances that guy is a complete boss? Even if he kills that guy... That'll only be one casualty and my Empire Forces won't have to take a route test. We're gonna win this scenario. And just to drive the point home, that swordsman on the stairs who has been a champion all day goes and kills the zombie that he's fighting. Probably by kicking his head off over the farmhouse wall. So now it's round 10 and because I killed a zombie, one more zombie can arrive from the lower section of the board. The second swordsman at the top of the ladder refuses to charge. He fails his fear test. The handgunners all miss their targets. The marksman does hit and wound, but he only manages to knock down another zombie. If you are playing this scenario, do not rely on your handgunners to thin out the zombie hordes that much. So it's the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase, and my swordsman hits but fails to wound the fresh zombie that just came up the ladder. In the return attack, the zombie manages to hit and get a crit. Now that's a big deal because now my guy doesn't get an armor save. So I roll two dice and the zombie kills him, just bites deep into his brain. So at least one of my zombies got a meal out of this disaster. So when that happens, according to the scenario rules, all the nearby zombies have to roll a d6. On a 5 or 6, they're unaffected. On a 1, 2, 3, or 4, there's just delicious brains spilled everywhere and they all stop to eat for the next round. However, the guy that just killed the swordsman is some kind of berserker zombie. He wants fresh brains. He's unaffected and ready to charge in the next round. So it's the last zombie round, and the maniacal zombie that just ate my swordsman charges into combat with the marksman. Another zombie charges the swordsman in the stairs who's been holding that area off this whole round. But all the rest of the zombies underneath the ladder, there would actually be a way for them to go through and attack more of my swordsmen, but all the rest of the zombies underneath the ladder either got knocked down or were busy eating brains. So the only person that can move forward is the one that got knocked down, and of course he can't charge, so only shuffles himself two inches up the ladder and is ready for nothing really, because Dawn's about to break. So in the last combat round, the marksman, terrified about the terrible crunching noises that just happened to his left, fails his fear test and misses the zombie attacking him. In return, he is hit, but he is not wounded, so he gets away with it. On the stairs, the swordsman finally goes and fails his fear test, but he still hits anyway on a six. That guy is just a beast. Unfortunately, he fails to wound, the zombie in return misses him, and that is the end of the game. So, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I was pretty disappointed. 
On the one side, this scenario worked out just fine with AI rules. There's really so few places that zombies can go and such little space for them to move that it really doesn't matter, that moving towards the closest model absolutely is fine. I was worried that it would be possible to use my Empire guys to kind of kite the zombies around the board and avoid them, but it really wasn't necessary. I was worried that having two sections of the upper floor gave me an unfair advantage, but after thinking about it, I don't necessarily think it's the case. All my Empire forces could have easily fit on one side of that upper floor. And then that would have meant that I only had to defend one access point. At least this way I had two combats going for the last couple of rounds. I think it would have been a lot different if in the initial zombie deployments, one of the groups of zombies had come in through the cellar and cut off some of my troops escape up to the second floor, or from the well, which would have done the same thing. As it was, they all came in from the table edges and gave my guys time to escape into the upper floor of the farmhouse. I was also disappointed to learn that I had to take route tests. I think it would have been a much more exciting scenario if my guys were more vulnerable, but the zombies had to kill off everybody. As it was, only taking two casualties and then having to make your route test, which is at an eight or less until the champion dies, and then it's at a uh, seven or less, I don't think that's as satisfying a result as if my guys either live or die. I mean, it might happen, and eight or less, there's you got like a 75% chance of passing that leadership test. But if you fail it, it's kind of like, oh, hmm, you know, my guys just run off. But just to test this out again, I went and ran this scenario a second time. So in this one, I took away the other ladder. And so there was only the one side. See if that made a difference. And I was also kind of hoping that on that initial deployment, I would get some zombies either coming from the cellar or from the well. Well, guess what happened? They all appeared from the table edges again. And this time I had everything sorted out. I kept all my guys together. We all moved up in formation up to that second floor area. I sealed it off with one of my guys, not the Count's champion, because I wanted to keep his leadership intact. And guess what? The game basically proceeded exactly as it did in this one. With one important exception, on round five, the zombie fighting the swordsman on the stairs managed to get a crit into him and kill him. Round six, I had another swordsman charge in against that zombie. My Count's champion actually failed his fear test. So it was just that one swordsman going in, and then that guy got killed. So beginning of round seven, I had lost two of my swordsmen. I passed my route test that round, and I charged in the last swordsman to guard the stairs. No wounds were caused in that combat. We moved on. No wounds were caused in the zombie round. And then on round eight, I failed my route test. So the zombies won. It's possible for the zombies to win in this scenario, but again, it wasn't a very exciting game. It was just all my guys holed up in one section of the second floor. One combat was going on at a time. The handgunners were shooting, but it didn't really make a difference. The zombie reinforcements didn't really make a difference. So here's what I recommend if you guys are running this scenario. Assuming your zombie player isn't automatically luckier than I am and get some reinforcements coming in from the cellar or the sewers on that first round, what I'd recommend is either eliminating the second floor altogether or making it too small to have all your guys in there. So a smaller farmhouse would be a good idea. Don't do what I did. Don't make this giant monstrosity of a farmhouse because that's what the map looked like. Use a smaller farmhouse and force your empire troops to guard more access points. And then get rid of the route test. Make it either all the Empire troops die, or at least one person survives. But that's just me. Maybe I'm crazy. I hope it works out for you guys if you decide to try it. Let me know what you think. Any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave those below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.